Hello, welcome to another episode of the Life Itself podcast. My name is Ailey, if you've not seen me before. Um, I do research and some comms work for Life Itself, kind of a mixture of lots of things. Um, and today we've got Theo Cox with us, who heads up Life Itself Labs, and Nathan Fitchin, who heads up our comms and media work. So yay, it's so nice to be with you all today. So what we're planning on doing is to sort of do like a wee season wrap up. So the last season of our podcast, we've been exploring social transformation. That was the title of it. So yeah, we've had some really great episodes chatting to lots of different people about what social transformation means, what it encompasses. So yeah, we thought it'd be valuable to do a wee wrap up, kind of reflect on what we've learned, what we're taking away from it. And uh, yeah, maybe see what we can do moving forward with everything we've gained so yeah that's the plan and yeah I think maybe we start up with a wee round of what we think we, we mean by social transformation just kind of to go around and hear our own reflections on what we mean by that as we finish up this season so yeah Theo do you want to kick us off like if I say social transformation what does that mean to you? Sure I mean I think one of my more interesting reflections from the the discussions that we've had is just how differently that that term can be used and, and understood depending on the the context that that we've explored it in and so i mean you know we ended up running with i mean this definition started off as pi paradigmatic integrated and um, engaged and now we've kind of switched to to pip of paradigmatic integrated and pragmatic so looking at you know across a entire paradigm of society rather than just kind of reformations for example making liberalism a little bit nicer or whatever but kind of like a, a real paradigmatic shift similarly kind of um, integrating across different sectors fields quadrants if you're a Wilbur fan um, and then you know actually being engaged in, in pragmatic and looking to change things rather than just kind of retreating out um, you know to sit and meditate on our cushions in the woods for example um, and I mean I really that definition to me really or you know sets of characteristics I think is probably the better way to put it I think really touches on the vision that I have of transformation and social transformation as something that is this kind of real large scale rethinking and reimagining reimagining of what society can look like but I think it's it's really interesting that all the people we we spoke to seem to be touching like a different part of that elephant so you know that there are these kind of different foci and everything from kind of institutions to our you know views and values and senses of the world and relationship to others and nature and it's interesting to me sort of posing a puzzle of how we bring all of those sort of different bits of the elephant together not just in kind of like a, a set of characteristics which has been our starting point but into a bit more of a, a cohesive vision of what that transformation might look like in, in quite a joined up fashion so that's as much a, a question and inquiry I'm in as a, as a definition or an understanding of myself, but I hope it's a good starting point. Mm, yeah, great starting point. Um, yeah, maybe I'm going to jump in and offer my thoughts on social transformation and then we can have it over to Nathan. So, yeah, I think it's really interesting what you picked up on there, Theo, is kind of these like characteristics of what we are identifying as being like important to this sort of movement. Um, I think for me what I'd reflect on is kind of what like transformation means like I think sometimes I hear this and I'm like gosh that sounds so like fluffy and like not really substantive but if there's anything I've learned since joining life itself gosh like nine months ago now and throughout this series is that yeah transformation for us we've kind of got these two foci so it's like the inner and the outer and something I'm coming to appreciate is this focus on the inner is so like central to this like paradigmatic shift that we see as needed so we're not going to be able to transform the systems that are like destroying the earth in pursuit of like never-ending growth and this culture of materialism and individualism until we like actually sit back and kind of dig in to ourselves and really kind of sit with who we are what our priorities are what gives us meaning and when we sit back and give that some thought and really like work on yeah like this inner development work can we see that oh all this stuff that we're like sacrificing for this 
kind of pursuit that we don't even know what it is it's, it's money but it's nothing that's making us happy it's nothing that's fulfilling us so once we kind of really grasp that and we can start to like think about like our actual priorities can we actually and, and addressing them can we start to really interrupt the dominant narratives that are prolonging these systems which aren't working so yeah that's what I consider social transformation so it's like this transformation that we need to transfer transform our systems which aren't working and are just resulting in all these crises and then the sort of inner tra transformation slash development that is going to enable that wider transformation so that's my reflection and Nathan do you want to bring us home and offer up your thoughts on social transformation mm. yeah I mean I resonate both with with what you're saying there and I think um you know one thing that's really struck me is how this idea of social transformation is so subjective in many ways, like what people see the transformation as can be very different. And that's, that's a real value in what we're doing really is that, you know, we have people like Jeff Morgan, who's working on kind of like political transformation and Hannah, who's working more with kind of kinship and understanding eco spirituality and many other things there. And um, yeah, from, from those episodes and, and the other ones, I think, it's really amazing to see that there isn't just one answer to social transformation. And I think that's what we were kind of trying to embody with, with the podcast and with the stuff that we do at life itself is that we don't have the answers necessarily, but there's a series of people who are trying to find them out, trying to live their answer and bringing them into the world. So it was really exciting to, yeah explore that and and I think we will continue to explore that into the future mm. yeah and I think that really brings us on to our next point really well which is sort of encompassing or trying to cover like why we're embarking in this conversation because yeah it's all funny good to talk about social transformation but like why are we doing it and I think you've really yeah you've touched on that this idea that there's so many people out there doing so many different bits and bobs um and we hope that by doing this exploration um which we've started on and I think we're all really excited to carry on with so that's kind of like the next stage of the plan but um the importance of actually sort of like bringing it all together so we can actually see what's out there and try and like discern all these different ideas and it's not that we're trying to like as as life itself life itself <laughs> this organization we're not trying to like we're not sitting down and trying to like, design a new culture and then like impose it on other people um but rather we're like seeing all these awesome like individuals and organizations that are imagining and building and testing these alternative ways of living being thinking running systems and we hope by like exploring them and, and like evaluating them and really just like getting stuck in that we can start to get this idea of like a cohesive whole and yeah and through that we can I really like him it. it's in the Jeremy Lent episode which was actually recorded a wee while ago with Rufus Pollock our co-founder but it just really fitted in well with this series we kind of like brought it back again but he talks about this rice pile analogy which is like it's this idea that if you're sort of dropping down individual grains of rice and starting to make this pile like you don't know which one is going to then like cause like a tumble, cause an avalanche. And I think at the moment we might have all these different organizations and people that are doing this really cool work into like trying to think about how we can do things differently. But if we're all like dotted around, then everything's just going to sit still, nothing's going to happen. But if we can try and bring this into this hole that just like just grows bigger and bigger and bigger and you don't know which are going to set the conditions for major change. And then one day there's just going to be this tumble. I think yeah that's that's one thing that I've been really excited about like kind of doing this project and sort of why I want to do this project is just kind of like bringing together all these different ideas and seeing what's out there and um yeah that's kind of what I really enjoy but um mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any specific aspect of this project that we're doing that you think is really important or interesting or like yeah why why are we doing this um well I mean I think just to, I mean, it's slightly tangential to that question, but I think really important picking up on the point of kind of, you know, you both have touched on that 
we're not trying to present an answer for what social transformation looks like. And I think, you know, that, that really rings true to, to my discussion with, with Jeff, Jeff Mulgan on sort of the, the deficit of social and political imagination. One of the things that I found interesting from his research was kind of the, the failure of, of really detailed utopian visions to actually ever catch on and sort of become a, a driving force for any kind of kind of transformative efforts. And in fact, the things that seem to be far more compelling as kind of the kernels for, for broader imaginaries are, you know, things like overarching value systems or something that's actually far more indeterminate, but which people can then kind of latch onto and sort of project their, their own meaning to it and follow. So, you know, the, be it the, the vegan movement, which has sort of these very general list of, of criteria, um, but then which has been spun out with these different directions. So I think that's kind of an important thing to, to reiterate at, at being at the core. But at the same time, we are in a period, and you know, I know there's kind of recency bias and all the other things that make the time we're living in feel extra significant, um, which may be disputable, but we haven't seen large scale, what I would call social transformation in, you know, arguably centuries mm. We've kind of had broadly the same social systems that have developed with kind of a few lurches in either direction and sort of shifts in the Overton window in a time of kind of rapidly changing sort of transformational or like technological development and so on and so forth and there's been a real deficit of I think integrated transformational efforts and so as you say kind of being able to bring together people that are, are touching different parts of, of the elephant and seeing what kind of might spark between those without kind of being overly prescriptive of how things fit together mm -hmm. i think is something that, that's really exciting to me and you know filling what i see to be a huge huge deficit in kind of the legitimate sort of transformational appetite that, that we currently face as a, as a society mm. Mm. yeah 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 yeah, I mean, I just had a, a question, like, how do you think we've kind of served that purpose with the podcast? I think we can also speak more broadly to also the ecosystem mapping. Um, mm -hmm. I think they both kind of um, work together in, in doing that. Um, maybe Theo, would you like to answer that one? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, the, the bit of this work that, that most excites me is the fact that it can kind of provide the the fuel for that kind of imaginative spark, I suppose, or that kind of that, that shift in imagination and by kind of ex uh, sort of through our own exploration and documenting that of kind of who's doing what, what's out there, um, you know, and ideally and sort of implicitly how they, they might begin to connect up with one another. We can create the foundation for those, those new narratives and new imaginaries and kind of shift the, you know, the imaginative Overton window around what's possible and what a transformed society is going to look like. You know, I mean, that's not the kind of OECD reports of, you know, live pollution tracking through your sort of augmented reality goggles and, you know, responsive energy price tariffs and things like that, that it's kind of very narrowly technological kind of like green growth capitalism which is kind of the, the current dominant sort of trajectory and imaginary and i think by bringing to like sort of very deeply contrasting efforts to that we can kind of spark that shift in sort of people's consciousness and people's understanding of what's possible would be my, my hope um and you know i think this has been the very early stages of just kind of presenting stuff and saying hey look here's these interesting things and these interesting ideas that that exist um and i hope as we, we go forward we can we can move beyond sort of that that pure presentation into a little bit more of a kind of linking up and drawing parallels and connections and, and sort of weaving weaving all that together a little more yeah because i think what, what we're kind of talking about in this idea of like connectedness and cohesiveness and sort of like feeling this and people might be listening to this being like what you guys did like I can't remember how many it was like nine episodes or something like like how so I think this is kind of where we can get into I found this series so interesting and so exciting and just so fun like researching who's out there like who's saying what uh, but it's definitely been like a start <laughs> we've scratched the surface 
Um, and I'm very aware that there's so many sort of ideas that we've not explored yet. So yeah, I think we can say that we're we're doing some work into this, and then we're going to be bringing much more rigor and research to this project in the future. So yeah, I can think we can definitely see another podcast series um coming up um and yeah just using this first one as like a jumping off point into this more deep analysis that we want to do um and yeah tying it in with this ecosystem mapping project that we've done and like theo you worked on that quite a bit at the start um i don't know if you want to maybe give a wee intro into what the project is and like how that sort of came about um for maybe those who've not heard of this ecosystem magic project ecosystem mapping project yeah Yeah. absolutely i mean i I won't speak too much length on this because we mean we've written sort of an article so you can check out mapping for emergence on on the emerge website or on our own blog and similarly ecosystem.lifeitself.org um and read some of our kind of initial writing and analysis there but yeah i mean it's kind of touches and touching the all of the bits that we've, we've spoken about so far that there's kind of this seemingly emerging ecosystem of people taking quite a radically different approach to social change and social transformation namely the one that kind of aligns with that that pip set of criteria that i touched on at the start and yeah it's currently very uncohesive there's people sort of doing lots of things in lots of different pockets and not really sort of a joining up or b presenting to kind of more you know mainstream society and even mainstream social change as a, a cohesive whole with a, a real if not united aligned vision of the ways that sort of society might need to shift um and we think a really important first step of that is actually doing that initial kind of mapping and exploration of, sort of what the territory is what's out there who's out there what are they up to and kind of um and then using that as a foundation to kind of create those those links and sort of that that next analytical and sort of more connected layer from there um but yeah which is is a really really exciting exploration that i will stop talking about for the moment and invite our our listeners to go and sort of take a read if they'd like to learn more Mm. yeah and speaking of people listening um i think we're definitely going to want to like some engagement some input in that so maybe turning to nathan our head of comms how can people listening sort of really get involved in this conversation and kind of contribute to this inquiry that we're doing Mm. yeah it's a good question I mean I guess to preamble that like you know the work we've done so far with this podcast and also to some extent the ecosystem mapping we are finding organizations and, and individuals to speak to primarily from like very limited I would say research of our own and like people that we know or is in our kind of like locality technically speaking. Um, And so it's in in no way complete. And I think that's just to say that, you know, there's so much more to do. There's so many more people to speak to. There's so many more ideas out there, which we hope we can kind of bring together to give people a resource where they can come and they can see all these ideas and and see where they might want to get involved. Um, And I think actually the conversation that I had with Brendan Graham Dempsey in, in that conversation, we spoke about the meaning crisis. And I think that's just one element of the crises we're currently facing. Um, but essentially what that was is that, you know, people are having this sense of futility because they, they don't know about purpose. Um, they're not feeling the purpose in their lives anymore. And that's partly because of things like social media taking over maybe the way that our education system works maybe the way our political system works um but i think what that does is it gives people a lack of of purposeful pathways in their lives that's that's a big thing that's missing from what we're doing right now is and it was for me as well before coming to life itself i've always been someone you know, looking for for new ways to do things, but not necessarily knowing what direction I want to go into. So, um, and I think that's something that we see as a a kind of spot to to grow in and and develop as part of life itself. Um, And so, 
currently we are kind of like in the background planning on how we're going to do this. Um, so we don't have anything concrete yet, but what we're actually doing is, you know, reaching out to you, the listeners and our newsletter subscribers to ask like, what, what do you find value in or like, what do you need from us as someone bringing together kind of like organizations and ideas and potentially like, ways to live a more purposeful life um yeah like within that what 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 are you seeking so currently we're creating a questionnaire um which should be super short to fill out but that will help inform us about kind of the next steps of what we're doing um and hopefully we'll be able to kind of like publish that as well if it's um useful so people can see like oh these are the ideas that people are kind of like valuing um so there will be some sort of output from that as well um but we really hope and encourage you to take part in this um it will help us also to yeah develop what we're doing but it's also just you know a mini social experiment to see what people you know what, what do people really value right now like what what are we seeking um so yeah i would encourage anyone who's listening to go and sign up to our newsletter which is where we'll be publishing the questionnaire shortly um should be within the next week right and if i could jump in there i think one of the the interesting things that i'd like to suppose to to you two but you know as an inquiry i'm in myself is kind of what do we think we've learned from our kind of like initial preliminary exploration um i mean both in terms of kind of ideas or you know more intellectual learnings but also how we can kind of go forward doing this work perhaps, you know, more effectively or, um, you know, deliver the next round of this project. Um, mm. I, I guess I would say like one part is that us as an organization do not necessarily have the, the time <laughs> to put in all of the work to make that happen. Um, so I definitely see, like the future of what we're doing very much like open to participation and um, ways for like many people to get involved to create this resource, which is going to make it more valuable. So the more people that can get involved can share their insights, the, the greater we're going to be able to kind of serve for the greater good. What about you, Ailey? Mm, it's a really good question. Um, I think because I'm... I don't know I feel like I'm quite new to this ecosystem and I don't think I really knew that this ecosystem existed like this time last year um so it's been a really fascinating yeah nine months or so for me and I've learned so much but um I think one of yeah I think the key thing that I'm learning is that yeah this stuff is is going on and that there's people doing this work which is I'm really ha happy about because I Nathan thanks for like sharing a wee bit about your kind of like journey into this space or kind of like how you felt but yeah I remember maybe this time like a year and a half ago just kind of like sort of mid pandemic so you know like mental health wasn't the best places anyway but just being like slightly despairing being about like things just don't really seem to be working and like yeah I was I was doing my master's and I was like learning about kind of like how we've ended up where we are today and sort of like all like the lobbying and PR that led us there and just kind of thinking like, oh, I really hope slash wish that there was these like think tanks putting all this research into alternatives to the current system. And lo and behold, <laughs> there is life itself. And here's a whole ecosystem of people doing that. So that was, I mean, just learning that this existed was really great. Um, and then kind of my learnings from this series is just so far in quite like a small scale seeing kind of the range of people working in it um and I think yeah so I feel like our episodes with Carl with Valerie with Jeremy Lent really well sort of encompass like the thinking that's being put into this area and sort of like the and also like the need for inner development and self-development like that that's really going on um but then also how that ties into sort of wider like political activism. And I think it's been really nice to see the connection because I think when I first sort of 
joy in life itself and just like explaining it to friends and things it was just kind of like trying to explain it and trying to make inner development and social transformation not sound like just airy fairy nonsense like a lot of my pals are climate activists um and just and like I, I've done some of that so just trying to like really explain to people how it is actually concrete and how it applies to like activism and like wider like social change and stuff like that and I think what's been really exciting about this series so far is I'm getting some of these sort of like niggling thoughts questions like answered to myself and I can point like I can explain it to my friends that um yeah kind of like the crises that we're facing at the moment is yeah it's it's gonna take a lot of like not currently not very integrated areas to come together and to like address these so yeah that's kind of what I've been really interested in hearing about and I really look forward to expanding this inquiry to voices that we've not heard from yet sort of ideas that we've not heard from yet um but yeah it's been super interesting so far yeah. thanks for asking yeah. <laughs> not at all not at all um yeah i mean i can really resonate with what you both said there i think and i think alia particularly kind of breaking through the the linguistic barriers sometimes and the kind of you know fundamentally like branding problem of often people you know you'll hear all of this kind of as you say kind of airy fairy language about transformation particularly when it's incorporating the inner stuff and people will kind of look at you like you spat at them or something and i think one of the things that i'm really keen to to do with our, our work going forward is to be able to engage with these ideas and kind of engage with these organizations in quite like a, a bit more of a matter of fact and sort of um you know accessible manner which resonates that can resonate kind of as you say with people working in perhaps more like traditional sort of transformative sectors um which is, is always an interesting challenge and i think the other one from from my perspective is and i think again touched on nathan's sort of request for inputs is kind of addressing our own blind spots and being very conscious that often, you know, we as an organization and even kind of this, this ecosystem have blind spots and how we can sort of work and particularly sort of collaborate with others to address those. And I think that was one of the really powerful moments for me actually was, was the, the interview with, with Hannah, my, my dear friend, Hannah Close. So shouts out Hannah, if she's listening, um, around kind of, you know, the almost colonial mindset that can sometimes pervade and particularly kind of, you know, the power dynamics between sort of um, women and men in particular, given her sort of our own perspective and looking at how we don't kind of let our lofty ideals detract from or kind of distract from the needs for kind of addressing those blind spots and shortcomings sort of in the day to day and on the ground. Yeah, thanks for yeah speaking to that, Theo. I think that was a really special moment for me as well because so you facilitated that chat with Hannah, but um, I was the one that was going through and editing it and publishing it and stuff. And when I heard that, oh, it was really exciting for me to hear it being addressed because I don't know, maybe it was something that was just kind of in the back of my mind. I was kind of noticing being like, mm, I'm not quite sure how I feel about us like talking about yeah, like systems change. Like I think like I remember like explaining it to family, like what I do, like yeah we're just kind of realizing that things aren't working now and that we need like new ideas but kind of thinking about like oh, who are we to say like what is a good idea and what isn't a good idea um and so just kind of her addressing that I think was just really like yeah I was just so glad that it was being spoken to um and yeah I think it was um, I, remember I wrote down the quote because I was like, oh, this is really great. I think the quote was, we don't want to collapse back into postmodern subjectivity and that all views are just as valuable as others, while at the same time not putting our grand plan out there as like the only plan. Like I'd like that we're kind of, I'll, maybe we'll talk about what metamodernism in a bit because that's whole, that's like a whole other complicated thing. But I like this idea that we can take maybe take this like sort of modern like modernist kind of like scientific like yeah like that isn't working but then also being open to an array of opinions and thoughts and voices and ideas and really taking them on and listening to them um yeah so that was really exciting for me um yeah and then also you kind of picked out this sort of like 
male female thing that Hannah spoke about sort of being a woman in this system in this ecosystem and again just a really nice thing to have addressed because in order for this ecosystem to take off at all we're going to need everyone and all voices heard and by actually like calling out these blind spots or these points of tension and not just kind of letting them fester that we can address these and open up the conversation and make sure that all voices are being heard and that our blind spots are being addressed so yeah that was a really special episode to me quite jealous of your friendship there I might have to (laughs) friend graft (laughs) Hannah close (laughs) Um, yeah just really great conversation so yeah that was definitely a highlight for me as well Nathan I really loved your episode with Brendan Graham Dempsey so I wonder if we can maybe touch on metamodernism because it's kind of a word that we've used in the past we've kind of thrown around um so maybe we can kind of touch on like yeah what does that mean where does it come from and maybe why we're perhaps not tied to that name yeah like maybe let's discuss that a bit so yeah I've kind of opened I've mentioned Nathan but like yeah Nathan Theo actually probably you Theo are probably more informed about metamodernism and so maybe i'll just pass to you for now drop me in it there man um (laughs) i'll do do my best um so i mean yeah my understanding of the the origins of the time i think were initially from more kind of like cultural theory and aesthetics Mm -hmm. um and particularly kind of like but the the kind of the broad idea and again you know i'm no metamodernism expert um but, you know, the broad idea is kind of we've gone from, from modernism to, to postmodernism, which is kind of, you know, the re- rejection of a lot of the, as Amy touched on, the kind of the scientific objectivity of modernism, then kind of moved to a, a deep sort of commitment to sub- subjectivity um, in, in postmodernism. You know, you've got the, the kind of Dadaists as the sort of pro- paradigmatic instance of that being taken to its real extreme. Um, and then metamodernism is meant to be kind of the next phase in this this evolution and the ability to kind of take the the perspective which um, again to to use kind of a, a more integral terminology like transcludes both of those so allows space for recognition of the importance of, of those elements of subjectivity and so on but also not being beholden to them and you know being able to, to draw on that those kind of modernist foundations of objectivity so, you know, being characterised by commitments of often sort of trying to move past traditional political binaries, say, of kind of left or right, and looking for for signal in the noise across all of them. Example of kind of something which is would be seen as a bit more of a a meta modern way of engaging with issues rather than kind of coming firmly down in an ideological perspective um, or lens, while still kind of holding and again sort of as, as we touched on. Uh, as AD touched on, not collapsing just into that kind of, you know, everyone's views with valid as everybody else's. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure Brendan explains it far better than I. Um, so, we'll, no, of, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave there for, for people to go and follow up on slash shout at me in the, the YouTube comments if I've inevitably yeah. butchered um, that definition. I do apologise. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to move to the second part of your question, AD, so kind of why we're not wedded to it, I think again it kind of speaks to one of those really interesting things that i've at least noticed doing this exploration of kind of how many as well as individual kind of organizations and actors which are are working in quite often quite a siloed fashion we've even got kind of like you know sub movements or sub scenes in this this broader sort of hip ecosystem um which often don't have as much overlap as you think so i mean it's been really interesting to me to engage with people that are you know designate as metamodernists and then kind of go over to people who are working and very similar sort of foundational premises that the you know we're going really wrong as a society and civilization that the the kind of crises we're facing are, are really interconnected but then they're like oh we don't like metamodernists you know mm-hmm. that they've got x blind spot or you know so on and so forth or even just kind of oh yeah you know they're great but we don't really sort of crossover with them all that much um or even having not heard of of that at all um and i think one of the really interesting challenges here 
is that there do seem to be these sort of sets of, of tribes which are, are coalescing around the, in this kind of broad orbit, but for, for various reasons might not be sort of engaged in, in discourse and collaboration as much as we might like, given the kind of shared base objectives. Um, and looking at, you know, how we can overcome that distance and even that kind of, you know, perhaps sort of suspicion or, or derision between those tribes so that we can kind of all agree that, you know, for want of a better word, everything's fucked and we really need to do something about it. Um, and so I think that's kind of, for me, the importance of, you know, I, I while I'm sort of really aligned with a lot of ideas in metamodernism, I wouldn't self-designate as a metamodernist. And I think it's, you know, one of the interesting evolutions we've had as a team as this project has gone on starting with the ecosystem mapping which we explicitly titled mapping metamodernism is that we kind of need to step out of that and into that kind of more central position and speak to those kind of broader range of um sort of people and positions in order to kind of really make this this weaving as as productive as as it needs to be given our kind of current time of crisis or polycrisis or metacrisis depending on which tribal allegiance you may hold <laughs> yeah thank you and yeah sorry for just throwing that on you guys but um I just was very aware that it was kind of a word that I didn't know coming into this space um and yeah I just found it really interesting and also being able to sort of map the the journey from like uh on how we've got here like our sort of like the the journey from like modernism, postmodernism to metamodernism, I thought was just yeah, really interesting. So um yes, thank you, Theo, for that. Um yeah, so we've kind of talked about we've sort of reflected on our understanding of social transformation, we've reflected on why we think it's important to really dig into it, and we've sort of gone over some standout points. I wonder, Nathan Theo, are there any other points from this series that really stopped and made you think maybe anything you disagreed with or maybe anything that really really did resonate with you um yeah it's, it's quite fun just kind of recapping everything that we've that we've learned because there was a lot and I know it was a wee while ago so feel free to take some time but um yeah anything else that that stood out Nathan I might return the favor and bump this <laughs> one to you given <laughs> yeah sure I mean I don't know if I have any particular reflections, except that from from the people that we spoke to and, and kind of like the diversity of ideas and also there's like um, almost like a, a spectrum between like, um, uh, maybe this one point from like what Valerie is saying, and this comes also back to linguistics in many ways, but like the idea of inner transformation, um, I think this was a, a great point of discussion and how Valerie is kind of saying that, you know, transformation suggests that you need to change into something. Uh, but actually, if, if you recognize that everything is already within you, is it really a transformation or is it just a kind of a development or a, a deeper understanding of yourself? Um, and I think what, what this speaks to again is, yeah, just, just the terminology that we're using. And especially when we're in this kind of like, area of of novelty in many ways as, as this is like an emerging space we have all these words are we using them <clears throat> effectively or are there better words to use and i think <clears throat> i think uh we love to get tied up with words but it's also really important because you know the language how we describe things is our fundamentals of communication mm. um and yeah this was a really interesting point from valerie yeah I really I found that really fascinating that was something that actually yeah really struck me in that um, chat I had with her was this idea that we don't need to transform ourselves we we need to stop and sit with who we are and what's already going on and just yeah like develop um and I, and I love what Carl talked about sort of coming to this world and to all our relationships and interactions as a whole being rather than performing in our relationships with others or interactions with others really sort of like being whole and being one so yeah this idea that we don't need to transform ourselves but by developing ourselves and sitting with ourselves and getting to know ourselves better that that's how we can enact 
social transformation. So yeah, we need to transform our systems and from developing ourselves, we can get there. So yes, no, thank you for raising that point. And yeah, you're so right. It's just a point of it's a, yeah, it's this, there's this whole ecosystem out there that we're exploring and just trying to get the right language. Language can be so ostracizing and alienating and some things have connotations which hit up people differently. And so, yeah, we're still experimenting. We're still figuring it all out. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a fun journey. But, yeah, and trying not to be scared of using the wrong language and because we, we can learn. Again, I love that in Hannah Close's episode talking about... Um, yeah learning from mistakes um yeah this just process of so by doing we can learn so yeah it's all super interesting and yeah the linguistics aspect of it is complicated but fun to to explore and figure out as we go mm. and i think I, I you know i really like that you've brought, brought that in from from valerie there nathan of kind of you know and it, again so valerie i know is a, a committed zen buddhist and that's kind of a, a really core cool idea of um, at least Soto Zen that kind of you know you've got nowhere to go and as soon as you let go of this sort of attachment to to getting somewhere is you can when you can actually kind of discover that you, you've been out there all along and I think that you know that applies beautifully to personal transformation but it's also been quite striking to me so as, as kind of someone that's more engaged in the kind of system side of things we call it be it kind of you know alternative economic politics etc that a lot of the kind of radical innovations which seem to be at the linchpins of kind of like different ways of, of understanding how we structure our societies been around for ages mm. you know ideas of what be it kind of you know the i mean a, a research project i'm doing at the moment on the co sort of cooperatives and the resurgence of the cooperative movement in in the modern era all the way through to kind of you know mutual aid networks fundamentally and kind of like you know exchange economies which which transcend kind of purely financial value and financialization and you know all of these different factors um have just existed and we have kind of pockets today of what the kind of the new world could look like and it's not about kind of conjuring things from thin air it's about finding those sort of often microcosmic examples and again sort of referring back to to hannah and kind of her, her time at schumacher college and the kind of small is beautiful approach that schumacher pioneered you know i think what's been really interesting for me i was historically really you know as a kid sort of obsessed with kind of you know changing the big things and you know it's all about getting big power and changing society in one big go or like you know, changing the world order and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and i've kind of had that transition to kind of going no there's this huge huge power in these kind of really small localized instantiations and experiments because they can really give something concrete that we can gesture to and say hey look this we're already here we just need to kind of work out how to expand this outwards and i think that again to kind of loop back to an, a, my own an, another real highlight of mine and you know the conversation with with jeff around imagination and that kind of the power that being able to say we're already here take a look can have for conjuring a new imaginary that people can unite around i think is absolutely huge so that's definitely something that, that i've taken away from from this exploration at the, the present moment something that i find hugely valuable mm, yeah that i really loved um that jeff outlined yeah some examples like because You've read his book. I have yet to. It's at the top of the to read list, which is ever expanding as always. But um, yeah, just really nice, really great that he's putting in this work to actually, yeah, research examples of social imagination and how it's working, whether like historically or today. Like, yeah, he talked about the sort of the development of cooperatives, talking about like Dutch healthcare system. Um, and also this really nice idea of, yeah, we can see examples, but we also need to, like, rigorously analyse them. Like, yeah, all these people are coming up with these ideas and stuff, but they do need rigorous analysis, they need to test it out, we need to see what works, but then also what is general generalisable, what's generalisable, or what's very specific. Um, and, yeah, I just I really love that part of this conversation, just kind of, uh, yeah, drawing out these examples and how 
we can yeah learn from existing things and build on them we don't need to start from scratch like that would be absolutely terrifying <laughs> like there's so much to build upon so many examples which is why I was actually really excited about this chat with Jeff as well because I wasn't actually familiar with him until I saw that episode so just seeing that there's people out there that's doing this research into examples of yeah social imagination and how we can learn from that and take already existing ideas was yeah really exciting so yeah go on Nathan and I have shared kind of some of our highlight moments Ailey what do you think of has been yours oh yeah quite a few I feel like I've sort of touched on them a lot um I really was very excited by yeah Hannah um addressing some of these blind spots that was really great um excited by Jeff Mulligan's talking about yeah social um imagination and I really I really liked that because I think the word imagination is yeah it can kind of co- come across as a wee bit lofty a wee bit mm, insubstantial and we actually had a lot of conversations sort of about this within the team about like terminology and um I've been kind of rooting for that that word recently just kind of when we talk about like our our own communications and stuff because of the Jeff Morgan episode because yeah we actually need to like imagine a, what a new world could look like like I remember him saying that he asked people what like a parliament 30 years in the future could look like sort of asking these more like social political imagination questions and people just didn't really have anything to say but all these technical innovations like people can dream up yeah like self-driving cars and hoverboards and all these exciting like techie stuff it's so I feel like it's so easy to yeah maybe not easy to imagine but it's almost more common when we think of innovation it's like tech innovation but yeah what does social innovation look like and it was sort of a question I hadn't really asked myself or being asked by other people so yeah that conversation was a real highlight to me and just kind of yeah bringing that topic to my awareness um yeah well I think we've touched on a lot there I think we've managed to like (laughs) talk about every single one of our episodes um there yeah um so that's fab um I really enjoyed the season so like thanks guys so much for your parts in it and we kind of split up the hosting and that was really great um so yeah I guess maybe now we can before we wrap up briefly talk about yeah what's next what do we what do we hope for the future of this project of life itself maybe just briefly I don't want to make any promises about what's coming but I know that I've definitely got like hopes and ideas and stuff so maybe a quick round of what can people maybe look out for? What do we want? What do we want to happen? Um, Nathan, why don't you kick us off? Mm, there's definitely an inkling of like maybe some of the, the challenges that we want to focus on and also maybe the needs of people, myself included, in the past, for example, um, of yeah, ways in which we can can show up with more purpose or ways we can get involved with this kind of ecosystem um whether that be through volunteering or work or or just like engaging more in, in the content that's out there already and the key ideas um because in a way you know the only way an idea spreads is by people getting behind it right so there's a there's a lot of ideas out there there's a lot of alternatives um so i hope we can yeah bring it together find more places for collaboration for innovation for connectedness um and yeah again i just really encourage people to hit up our newsletter and answer this questionnaire because that's going to inform a lot about what it is that we're going to look at next um yeah i'll pass to you Theo. sure i mean say you know from from my own work in, in life itself labs one of my my big hopes in the kind of coming period of indeterminate length is going to be you know looking at how we can start some some real experiments with making some of these imaginaries a reality so you know what what kind of alternative approaches to, to governance economics and so on might look like in in real world contexts and, and as, as ad touched on doing that kind of 
bit more rigorous analysis of what lessons we can we can learn across contexts. So please do hold tight for that. And then um, things going well, we might be taking another look at kind of expanding and continuing the ecosystem mapping initiative. We recently kind of made that a completely open project, so it can be contributed to really easily from from anybody in the community. So I'm really hoping and looking forward to that kind of the activity and kind of peer working and collaboration that, that opens thanks to all those who have contributed so far um and then yeah we can see how all of this unfolds um and i'll, I'll pass to Amy maybe for some more specific stuff around the the rest of the organization and kind of the specific next steps yeah so well i really just, i really love this like chatting to people seeing who's out there i'm already really chuffed that since we sort of started this project people have like reached out to us and I've had lovely conversations over Zoom. Hopefully maybe meet people in real life at some point soon as well. Um, so yeah, carry on this discussion and really dig into who else is out there and exploring all these organizations that we've already come across and chatting to them and digging into it and evaluating these ideas and then also figuring out who we've not found yet which, which I'm sure there's so many of maybe let's not think about how daunting a task is that is but um yeah get excited about it so yeah um immediate next steps are there will be another hello Theo was that yeah well, I was gonna say last last couple plugs then on that note um just yeah if people are aware of organizations or people that they they'd like us to speak to if they think we're displaying any blind spots they want to call to our attention then please do reach out drop us a, a message so email hello at life itself .org, um is kind of the, the first book call to start with as nathan touched on the the questionnaire is going to be coming out hopefully kind of in the next week so please do sign up for our, our newsletter and when that that reaches your inbox feed into to what you think would be most helpful and what you'd like to, to see us look at um and then finally in sort of the other part of, of our core functioning at life itself we're running a series of residencies called embodying collective transformation over our hub in bergerac so run by the inimitable carl stayat who i interviewed which involved kind of these incredible one week intensive training courses touching everything from kind of emotional self-connection to, to conflict resolution and mediation and a bunch of of personal and collective practices which are just crucial for operating in life and particularly kind of in, in group context you know I've, I've done the training can recommend and then followed by kind of three weeks living in community to put that stuff into to practice when someone inevitably doesn't clean up the kitchen or whatever it means. <laughs> so um please do check those out if you're interested in, in seeing how we're trying to walk up, walk the talk a little and do our own experiments with what the new world could look like um so yeah those are those are my plugs and i will hand back to you Ailey, to to take us out Thank you for plugging Theo. Um, yeah, the podcast will be back soon. Who knows when, but soon. Um, and yeah, I really look forward to more conversations like we've had. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been so lovely reflecting on everything. Like it's been, yeah, I've learned so much and it's been really fun. So I really look forward to digging into that even more and trying to loads more people. Um and yeah, it's going to be absolutely great. So thank you both. I think we can probably wrap up there. Yeah, yeah, thanks thank everyone you. for listening. Great. Bye. You see.